Hi friends, today we are going to solve minimum average waiting time from the queue. Uh, it's not from queue, it's from heap of data structure. So, queue owns a pizza restaurant and he manages it in his own way. While in a normal restaurant, a customer is served by following the first order, following the first come first serve rule to simply minimize the average waiting time of the customer. So, he gets to decide who is served first regardless of how sooner or later person comes. Different kinds of pizza take different amounts of time to cook. Also, once he start cooking a pizza, he cannot cook another pizza until the first pizza is completely cooked. Let's say we have three customers who come at time T0, T1 and T2 respectively. And the time needed to cook their pizza is 3, 9 and 6 respectively. If Q applies first come first served rule, when the waiting time of the three customer is 3, 11 and 16 respectively, the average waiting time in that case would be 10. This is not an optimized solution. After serving the first customer at time T3, Q can choose to serve the third customer. In that case, the waiting time would be 9. So in this case, it's a basically it's a basic problem I need to use it using Q because Q would help us to solve this type of problems. So let us first try to do the most important thing. Import Q, hip Q. Two important function of the hip Q, hip push and hip pop. So once we have done that, we will need to initialize few variables. The first variable would be the waiting time. Then the total time. Then now we will be the thing to understand is that we will also uh, we will want to sort the customers on the basis of the we would be basically reversing the customer array so that the smallest one come at the uh, last position which would be easier for us to manage and handle it's not mandatory you can apply some other approach but let's for me let's try this customers dot sort reverse equal to true and we will also create another variable called hip q so once we have initialized this variable hip let's call it hip qx just not to get confused with our input function so we'll write a while statement while there is any value in our hip q hip qx and customers we would be continuing the loop the loop will only get exist will only get uh, will only exit or the while loop will end once both of this both of these hip qx and customers will won't have any value so that's the idea so the first condition to check if Customers is true means there is some value in the customers and customers the idea of reversing the entire customer list is basically to get the last uh, to get the smallest value at the last of our customer array. So to do that, we will be checking whether the uh, whether if customer and customer is less than total time. Let's give it less than equal to total time because in the during the first instance it can happen that the value would be zero. So if it's if it's a condition, then basically we'd be pushing 
uh, pushing that customer nested array which it contained for example 0 comma 3 to our hip hip uh, hip x value so hip x hip push dot hip x and the value would be customers dot pop the so pop would basically take the last element in that list and we'd be reversing the value so it would be for the first instance it was uh, arrival time and then the cooking time for that pizza now it would become the cooking time and the next value would be arrival time let's take the example of 0 comma 3 so the first thing would be 0 and 3 in our customer nested array it would be present in this manner but when you do the hip push it would automatically become 3 comma 0 so it is done to help us to manage this entire structure so this is not an hard and fast rule that you have to follow this so you can do it according to your wish so next we'll be checking whether we have any value in our hip qx so if we have a value in our hip qx then there would be a tax time would be would hip hop dot hip qx so in this way we'll get the tax time which would be basically time to take the pizza and then the arrival time and from that we'd be increasing the total time so our total time would become so the cooking time is at the first so our total time would be become total time plus equal to tax time dot zero which would basically be, be the cooking time and our waiting time would be total time minus tax time dot one so basically waiting time if you want to do it it is basically the time from the arrival to the time you get the pizza so here if you look at it the waiting time is calculated between the difference between the time a customer orders the pizza and the time she she is served so that's the basic idea of the waiting time and else there could be a condition where uh, during a duration of time for example you won't have any customers so for example this could happen the first customer would have arrived at 1 comma 3 then 1 comma 9 and 2 comma 6 so from duration of 0 to 1 he won't have any customers so during that time we could basically do one thing is A push our hip qx dot the same logic of popping our customers and then reversing the order so that the time to cook the pizza comes first and the arrival terms time comes second and we would be basically declaring the total time equal would be the q qx dot zero comma one so during the first instance instance in this case our total time would automatically become when the let's take from one comma two so it will uh, come to this it will when it come to this while loop 
so the first condition would fail because yes it the customer list is still not empty but the customer value or the customer arrival time is not less than equal to total time so it would fail as it failed so our hipqx won't have any value hipqx would be empty so it will go to this while loop or else part and in, in, in this else part we would be basically appending that value to our hip qx and we'd be in, we'd be initializing our total time since which would become one instead of starting from zero to be starting from one and this way it would continue so there could be a situation for example the third customer would arrive at time 15. so even if after the two iteration the total time would become 12 so initially the total time is one then one plus two it would become three then plus nine it will become 12. but during the 15 instances the total time is not less than uh, the customer timing is not less than the total time so in that case our total time would be will initializing our total time with 15. So our total time in this case the time the time would be 15 so that's the idea and now we'll be returning our return waiting time we don't want an integer value we don't want a floating point value or decimal value we want integer value so double division and after that we'll be dividing by n so n would be basically the total number of customers or we could always use plain dot customers but just to reduce the time complexity we'll be using n so that there isn't any time spent on calculating the total number of customers so that's the idea and apart from it, one more thing to understand is that this is a hard problem. So there would be a few cases where the you will get a runtime error because or a runtime error because the time you took to execute this entire problem exceeds the given amount of time. So just make sure that whatever code you write. Okay, it failed all the test cases. That's strange. Let's check what I have done a mistake. Okay. How oh, output is zero? Here the output is different. So let's check. File customer or hip queue or customer. Okay. File customers and customers minus one comma zero less than total time a push customers to pop 
looks fine to me. Tab equal to to them equal to Okay, that's strange. It should be working the similar way. Customers dot customers dot short. Let's check this. I don't know why it is failing in that case. It should not. Okay, so in this case, as you could see, it worked properly. So there are a few things I'm not able to understand. Maybe in the upcoming videos, I will tell you why the value I have set, it did not work. But anyway, so this is the basic code I have written. So although there are a few, it kind of puzzled me even though I haven't solved the problem. So maybe I will check this code and maybe write in the comments or description the reason why it was failing in the first case. And meanwhile, if you a guy is able to find a better solution, please comment below or find a reason why it didn't work the first time. Do comment below. And as always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned.